Look, I can chat, okay? So I gotta make sure I stay on topic. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Jordan Elise Turner. If you landed on this video or you landed on my channel, it's probably because you're interested in personal growth, personal style, and personal success content. If that sounds like something that you're interested in, I would highly encourage you to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and share this video with a friend. Make sure that both of you come back every week for a new upload. So today's video will be very simple and straight to the point, and it's going to be on how to create a relationship with the Lord. When I say the Lord, I mean Jesus Christ and God the Father and the Holy Spirit. It was really on my heart to make this video because this is something that I would have wanted to hear as I was building my relationship with God. A little bit about me, I got saved and filled with the Holy Spirit at just six years old, um, but unfortunately because I didn't grow up in a background or a household that had a relationship with God beyond the, the confines of tradition and going to church and really being able to see modeled before me what it looks like to walk by the Holy Spirit every single day. I fell into, you know, all of the traps and all the obstacles, the deception that this world has to offer. I somewhat lost my identity, but when I had the opportunity to come back to the Lord at 14 years old, I was then again saved, I was rebaptized, and I was again filled with the Holy Spirit, and he put me into the ministry of the reading of his word, right? And I say it's a ministry because it is a very, very tough job to um, discipline yourself in the way for us to get up every single day and want to eat the word of God, want to meditate on it, to want to consume it to the point where it literally transforms us. And so at 14, I decided to go ahead and do a seven day fast, had no clue what a fast was, didn't even know where that idea came from. I now know that it was the Holy Spirit. During that fast, I read the Bible every single day. And by the end of that, I was distinctly different. And I knew that I had been transformed into the kingdom of God completely. And then from there, you know, again, losing my way again, like we all do, you know, prodigal son, prodigal daughter, and just kind of being wayward. But, you know, I've always had a relationship with God even since 14 because he was such a big part of my life. And I know that that encounter with him at that age made me very different. And so I could never fully ignore his presence in my life. And I'll spare you the details of what my story looked like beyond that because that is a testimony for another day. But I will definitely tell you guys that building a relationship with the Lord, it is a journey. It is a process because you're going from being able to view God through the eyes of man, through the eyes of tradition, through the eyes of religion to now being able to relate to him as father. And that is a very, very hard for a lot of us to do because we are growing up in a society where unfortunately fathers are delinquent they're negligent parents in general are delinquent and negligent uh, we don't have the best relationships with friends and family model before us and so it's really hard to accept and receive the pure love that God has for us because it quite literally is overwhelming um, but the Lord loves us so much and he desires a personal relationship with each of us because he's a very personal God and so these are some things that I have learned over my um, 10 years. Oh my God. Yeah, I've been re saved, I guess, for 10 years now. I'm 24. Um, this is some things that I learned, some things that I wish I would have learned, or things that I am learning. So in this video, we're going to cover four things. And I have my phone here because I'm always, I got to look, I can chat. Okay. So I got to make sure I stay on topic. We're going to talk about one, what a relationship with God is not. And I'm going to talk about it from my perspective, my point of view, things that I've actually, you know, had to overcome, not from a religious or judgmental perspective um number two the distinction between religion and relationship and i'm going to pull up a couple of scriptures or i'm just going to lead you guys to passages of scriptures that you can read in your own time number three is going to be how to cultivate a relationship with god and what that actually starts with which i think a lot of people overlook and number four what is maintaining a relationship with god look like and i think this is going to be really helpful number three and four because i think most people tend to put number four before number three and i'll talk about what that means throughout this video okay so the first thing we need to know is what a relationship with God is not. A relationship with God is not a opportunity for us to encounter and for us to be in relationship with the divine creator out of obligation, um, out of force, out of, you know, desperation necessarily, and out of, um, you know, God playing some type of sick game where you actually cannot win at life unless you bow down and serve him right at the end of the day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess but god gave us something called free will that he himself has honored has respected and loved so much that we all have the choice to choose whether or not we will accept his son jesus christ as our lord and savior and whether we will accept him as the way to the father the reason why i said we have a choice is because joshua 24 and 15 where the bible says 
And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye shall serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the Jordan, or will you serve God, essentially, right? So we all have to be faced with that choice at some point in our lives. And so because it's a choice, you don't have to have a relationship with God, but there are many benefits, many blessings, and an opportunity to be truly transformed and live in total freedom that we do not encounter unless we are in relationship with Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, right? So a relationship with God is not out of force. It's not because, you know, God has rigged the game of life, and if you don't come into a relationship with him, you will never see any success. You will never win at anything. We know that's not true because you have people who have nothing to do with God and still live a very blessed life. Why is that the case? Well, the Lord has written laws and patterns throughout the universe that if you do this, then this will happen. And so a lot of what we're seeing, especially when people are prospering, even though they don't have a relationship with God, is because they are in some ways doing what the Lord has said to do in the Bible. But what makes the difference is that you can do all of those things, but by that same law, you will be judged. When you come into relationship with God, it frees you from the law. It frees you from the sin and the penalty you have to face on the day of judgment because you have now agreed to allow Jesus to be the one who ushers you into the presence of the Father and his spirit to completely transform you. So it takes the burden off of you. And I think I want to make that clear. A relationship with God is not a burden. It is not a responsibility that you have to take on. And it is not something that God is going to force you to have. And if you come to the Lord with that type of heart posture, then you're kind of already at a bad start as it is. A relationship with God is also not, I go to church every Sunday. It's also not, I serve in the church. It's also not, I pray for people. I do this and I do that because the Bible tells us that many will say, Lord, 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 haven't we done these things in your name? And he will say, depart from me. I did not know you, right? So we will often confuse relationship with religious tradition and doctrines of man that we have seen modeled before us from generation to generation and make that automatic assumption that we have now received salvation or that we have the benefit of being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And that is not the case. So just because you are involved in some level of religious activity and just because you do the right thing, right? Because the Bible tells us that no man is good. So it don't matter if you're doing the right thing or not, you even seeing benefits. The Bible tells us, and it's very clear, there is only one way to the Father and that is through Jesus Christ. And so if we don't have that relationship with him and we try to manufacture it out of, you know, what we do as our works, we will miss the benefit and the blessing of coming to God by grace through faith. So the distinction between relationship and religion, there are so many passages of scriptures that I could possibly give you guys about this. And for the sake of time in this video, I'm just going to list them all right here. And they will also be listed in the description box because I want you guys to actually get into the habit of reading, not letting me interpret the word for you or anybody else for that matter. But I want you to read and I want God's spirit to reveal to you what you need to know. But throughout the scriptures, you will often see, especially in the process, prophecy books, Isaiah and Jeremiah, where the Lord is judging his people. And the first thing that he talks about is one, the posture of the people's heart. That's important. And we'll get to that in number three. But the Lord also talks about all of the religious things that the people of this time were doing. And you would think that those were good things because that's what people have taught us. That when we do these things, it makes us righteous. But we know that our righteousness comes by Christ. And so like in Isaiah, right? In Isaiah 58, to me, that's the first passage that's coming to my mind. That is the standard that God has set about true fasting. And he talks about how people do all of these religious festivals, how they fast and gird themselves in sackcloth, how they mourn, how they go to church, how they help other people, but they're doing it all for show. They're doing it for religious performance for other people. And Jesus himself talks about this when he speaks about the Pharisees and the, the issue that he has with them. And it's that you do all of these things to broaden your shoulders, to add more tassels to your garments, to have more degrees on your name, but you don't actually do any of these things with the right heart. And that's really what God looks at. And so that's actually what the distinction between religion and relationship is, is that it's the posture of the person's heart. Religion is doing things in effort to get God to move on your behalf, knowing that your desire and your motives are actually selfish. And I would even say sometimes we don't know that that's the posture of our heart. And that's why it's so important to have a relationship with God, because his spirit will show you when you are in error. The thing about man is that we are all susceptible to this very disgusting, wicked abomination that the Lord hates and it is called pride and pride will spring up so much in our hearts that it will blind us from being able to see 
when we are actually backsliding and walking away from God as our first love. And so you would be in the habit, the tradition of doing religious things, going to church, taking your communion, reading your Bible, even praying, even saying the right words in your prayers, doing things to help out the poor, volunteering and all of these things that we think are what God judges us based off of our works. And in turn, God is actually looking at the motive of our hearts. And sometimes we are so ignorant that we don't even see that our motive has not been pure for a really long time. It could have usually started off that way. And I know when you first become a Christian, you are so excited. You have the joy of the Lord. You have the fruit of the Spirit starting to bud. And so you naturally want to get out there. You want to be in community. You want to help people. And it is just truly a, it's a wonderful beautiful experience. God has really called us to continue to cultivate that kind of feeling throughout our journey with him. And it's very, very hard, but we have to keep that fire burning. But you'll do those things and eventually it becomes second nature. And when it becomes second nature, you don't realize that you're not serving other people. You're not serving your local church. You're not serving God because you really love him, but you're doing it because you have now believed that the works that you do is what your salvation was in versus understanding that in no way are there any amount of things that I could ever do that would keep me from being able to face the wrath of God for all the sins that I and the people who came before me actually piled up. Only one way to absolve that and that is through the blood of Jesus Christ. Now I said something really important and I said the difference between religion and relationship is the posture of the heart because you can be in the activity, the routine of doing religious duties and your heart can be far from God. And so I would say the first thing you need to do to cultivate a relationship with God is to check your heart posture. There are a couple of scriptures about self-examination that I also will leave in the description box that I really want you guys to read and meditate on. But this is something that the Lord has really had to press into me in this season of my life because a lot of times you don't see where you are in error. You don't see where you are incorrect. You don't see where you have compromised, right? But the Holy Spirit, because he is a spirit of truth, will reveal to you the areas of your life that God is not pleased with. And it is up to us to humble ourselves before the Lord as he shows us what these things are. And I'll tell you how to self-examine in just a second. But the more that you actually get in the practice of examining yourself and allowing the Holy Spirit to cross-examine you over and over and over again, when that becomes the prayer of your heart, you will be so disgusted with what you read about yourself in the scriptures. Because now when you read it, you can't apply it to other people and say, oh, I need to send this verse to X, Y, and Z because they have bad anger. I need to send this verse to this person because I saw them steal the other day. You start to look at it and you realize that you are looking in a mirror and everything that the Lord hates is actually found in you. And that's a very sobering feeling that can even lead you into condemnation and shame. But the Bible tells us there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So the function of self-examination is not to shame and condemn you, but it's to reveal to you the areas that God wants to work on you so that you can be perfect from the inside out. But because it's so many things that you will find wrong with yourself and that he will find wrong with you, you have to realize that you only rely on him to work those things out. And that is the heart of a relationship with God, is that because he is a very personal God who loves us in a very personal way, he understands the depths of our heart. He understands our minds. He understands everything that is in the soul of a person that is even not shared with them as the individual or not share with other people. And he knows what it takes to get that person to look like his son, Jesus Christ. And we cannot work our way to that image. We have to be sanctified to that image. And you will only experience that if you are in relationship with God. So your heart's posture is the first thing that God looks at when it's determining whether or not you have a real relationship with him. Because a relationship implies a level of dependence, right? There is an agreement between both parties that I I will love you. I will serve you. I will devote myself to you. I will cleave unto you until we both reach the intended goal of unity with each other. The Lord always puts this in the context of Ephesians 5 for me when it talks about how a husband ought to love his wife. Well, the Bible also tells us in that same passage that the husband loves his wife as Christ loves the church. So when you read that in your own time, I want you to read it with spiritual eyes to see the relationship that Christ has with you. And he is fiercely devoted to us. He is jealous for us. He loves us so much, not because we're so good, but because we are in the image of his father. And it is the Holy Spirit job to make us like him. And he does not stop until we say, 
I don't want any more to do with this, right? And sometimes we will take ourselves off of the potter's wheel, biggest mistake we can make. But when you're in relationship with God, he will constantly reveal to you the things that you're doing wrong, the things that you're doing right, the things that he wants you to continue doing, the things that he wants to tweak, the things that he wants to adjust, because his goal is not necessarily your comfort, but it is holiness and perfection and for you to look like Jesus. So when you want to have a relationship with God, you have to be willing to admit in humility, I am not good in and of myself. I can do nothing in and of myself. It is only by you that I have my being, I move, I exist, and God, I need you to lead me in the way that you have designed for my life to be. And I need you, God, to make me like Christ because apart from you, I literally cannot meet the standard of perfection. And so the beauty of our relationship with God is once you are in the place of humility and you see all of the things that could be wrong about you, um, God himself will fix those things about you too. And so that is the purpose, that is the beauty, and that is the joy of true relationship with God. And it starts at the posture of the heart. Now, I also wanted to include in this video, which I don't think I did when I talked about how to cultivate your relationship with God, is that the Bible says that they that come to him must know that he is. So even before you get to the heart posture, we got to understand relationship with God is a call and a response. We don't initiate relationship with him because the Bible also tells us that it is by himself, his own spirit, does he draw people to him. So every time we decide, hmm, I want to build my relationship with God, I think I want to go deeper with the Lord. I want to be more intimate with him. We must understand that that is not a thought that is ideated in the human mind on its own. That is because God's spirit is drawing you closer to him. And so when you come to him, you must know that he is. What does that mean? You must know that he is God. You must know that he's merciful. You must know that he's compassionate. You must know that he is the creator of the universe. You must know that heaven is his throne and the earth is his footstool. You must know that he is the father of everything and no created thing could ever be exalted to the same level of him you must know that you are a child and he is the father and he will do with you as he pleases you must know that he's the potter and you're the clay and he will shape you and mold you into whatever he wants you to be when you have this reverence and this knowledge of who God is it makes having a hard posture of humility that you can enter true relationship with him in much easier and this is something I wish I would have known because a lot of times we go through this process and we think oh God just loves me so much he loves me how I I am he's in a relationship with me because I'm such a great person I'm such a holy person I'm such a good and kind person and truly like I said as you start examining yourself you realize that that's not the case and God just loves us because that's who he is and so finally how do we actually maintain our relationship with God well this is what people tend to put the cart before the horse your spiritual disciplines which are gifts and tools and resources that the Lord has given us to maintain our spirit to spirit connection with him on earth are not necessarily what makes us holy and it's not necessarily what constitutes a relationship with God so your tools that he's given you is what helps us to maintain that relationship not the foundation that we necessarily build on and when I say that I want to be careful because I said that the first thing that the Lord allowed me to do at 14 was to bring me into the ministry of studying his word but notice that that didn't happen until I responded to the invitation that the Holy Spirit was giving me to draw closer to God in order to really come back into alignment with him and then I started studying the word and that continued to cultivate my faith. It continued to give me the word of God to stand on and it continued to restructure and change my soul and convert it as the Bible tells us. So your spiritual disciplines, and I'm talking like studying the Bible, praying, fasting, fellowshipping with other Christians, those are the things that God has given us to maintain our relationship with him. I would even add consecration to that list as well, and we'll talk about that in a second. So why are these tools and not necessarily the foundation which we build on? Well, the Lord gave me a revelation a couple of months ago that, you know, some people are just in error because they don't understand that there has to be a mix of all of these spiritual disciplines. And if you lean too far into any one of them, you do risk coming out of the love relationship that you have with God. And that's why it's important to walk by the Spirit. And when the Bible tells you to walk by the Spirit, it's essentially telling you to be sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. And that's super important in developing a relationship because in a natural relationship, sometimes you don't always have to talk to the person. Sometimes it's showing an act of love. Sometimes it's just moments of silence. Sometimes you guys need to go on a date. And all of those things are what contribute to a healthy, long-lasting, and exciting relationship. And 
and God wants to relate to us in the same way. So if you get into the habit or the routine of only studying your Bible for 30 minutes in the morning and then you do prayer for an hour and then you get up and you don't really allow the Lord an opportunity to come into your space and be able to pour and minister into you, it's really, really difficult to have a exciting relationship with him. And that's when you do run the risk of falling back into religion versus relationship because now you are acting in your own strength. So in all of those things, if you start to lean too far in either direction of your spiritual disciplines, a couple things can happen. So if you read the word too much and you don't pray, you can end up becoming a very religious, a dogmatic, and also interpret the scriptures incorrectly. And you really won't apply them in the way that God intends. And you see this a lot with people who say they read the word and have literally read it front to back and now use it as a weapon against people, even Christians, to say exactly what the scriptures are saying versus allowing the Holy Spirit to interpret it to them and apply it to their life first before they go out and judge people by that same measure of rule, right? So if you study the word too much, but you don't pray, you're not allowing the Lord to interpret. You're not allowing the Lord the space to speak back to you or to minister to you what this word means for you. You're also not going to the Lord in prayer and saying, according to your word, Lord, I ask that you would do this thing or you would help me in this way because this is your standard that you've outlined in principles. So when you only study the word, but you cut off the communication that you have with the Lord spirit to spirit, you are only relying on your own intellect to be able to interpret and to apply the scriptures to your life. And then you're essentially living by the law. Now, if you pray a lot, but you don't read the word or I keep saying read, but I mean study like I'm always talking about study if you pray a lot but you don't study the Bible now you are risking becoming a heretic and what this means is that you are adding to the scriptures you're taking away from the scriptures or you're coming up with your own interpretations of the scriptures that are often led by your feelings are often led by doctrines ideologies philosophies of the world and sometimes just even your own resources right that is when you run the risk of being an heir because God's word is what he already said and if we go to him in prayer looking for a new word or for a prophetic word or even for rhema we risk opening ourselves up to other spirits who can lie to us who can deceive us who can speak unbiblical truths and we receive them as the word of God and we receive them as true because we're not holding it up to the standard of scripture to see if this is in line with what God already said God is very consistent okay to say the least he's very very consistent so his word that he speaks to you in prayer through communion with him is not really going to well not really it's never it's never going to be out of alignment with what he already said in the Bible. And so you use both of them as litmus tests to determine what the will of God is. The scriptures are also God's main mode or channel or resource to convert the soul of the sinner. So when you pray too much, a lot of times we go to God in our feelings. We go to God with our emotions. We go to God crying and, you know, saying, well, Lord, why isn't it working? And we haven't searched the scriptures for the answer to be able to transform our souls that they may be in alignment and yoked to Christ versus yoked to our own desires. The other thing that can happen is let's say you fast too much, right? And I'm not saying too much in a sense that you can do any of these things too much. But what I'm saying is that if there's no balance and you're not letting the Holy Spirit show you, hey, you need to really pick up your word a little bit more. Or, hey, I need you to really spend a lot more time in the posture of prayer. Or, hey, start picking up the fasting, right? I need you to kill the flesh a little bit more often. You are again, doing things in your own strength. You're not letting God build his relationship with you in the way that he knows that you need. So let's say you fast too much. You fast too often and you don't read the word or pray while you're fasting. You're basically on a hunger strike and you are starving yourself. And you may as well go in the kitchen and eat everything you want because you are availing nothing. If you fast, which is to abstain from food, from a certain period of time and you don't eat the word of God and you don't pray God's will according to his word during that time, you're, you're just starving yourself, okay? And that is what a lot of people in the world will do. And so they talk about the health benefits of fasting and how to lose weight with fasting. That's essentially what you're doing if you're a Christian who is fasting, but you're not actually using the replacement of God's word as your meal instead. So when we wanna build a relationship with God, it's so important to remember that the Lord is looking for honest, pure, and humble hearts. There are countless scriptures about this that I will also leave in the description box and on the screen somewhere for you guys to study as well. But I want you to know that God wants that relationship with each of us. He desires for his sons and his daughters to know him personally and intimately because I think God has really cracked the code, of course, because he's 
literally wise but i think he knows the best secret to truly transforming people and making their lives better is through love and he himself is that love and so when we have a collision with the god of the universe who wants to become our father and we become adopted by him we are enveloped in his love that he gives us and that is what allows us to really see the freedom the fruit and the life that god has already had planned for us from the very beginning of not even time but eternity and so what i really want people to understand is as you're trying to cultivate a relationship with the lord he's going to be looking mostly at your heart and that is not a license to sin or do whatever you want on the outside but by him being in personal relationship with you and the Holy Spirit, which is called the finger of God, being able to touch the parts of your heart that you didn't even know were broken, didn't exist. You parts of you that have been dead a long time ago that you never, ever got a chance to see um, things that, you know, your family struggled with that you couldn't seem to overcome yourself. When God gets into those parts of the human life, it really does open us up to experiencing an abundant life that you cannot have apart from him and he wants that with each of you but it is our responsibility to enter into that relationship one knowing who god is two understanding it is a response to who he is and three submitting to him in humility and the right heart posture that allows god to do his work in you and through you and your responsibility in this situation is one letting the holy spirit show you where you need to be worked on and two continually maintaining and building the relationship you have with god with the resources he's given you the another thing that i really want to add to this video because the holy spirit is kind of this video is really all over the place and i hope y'all get what i'm saying because I, I just i felt inspired to actually talk about this um is that when God calls us, because again, it's an invitation, it's a call and a response. And the only role we really have in relationship with the Lord is to respond to what he is doing. Is that when he called the disciples, notice that he didn't call them into their purpose. He didn't call them into apostleship. He didn't call them into deliverance. He didn't even call them into, you know, some amazing thing that they hope to get from being with him he called them to himself and everything else that they experienced as a work of their ministry especially as apostles filled with the holy spirit was a byproduct of being in close relationship with the lord for the years that they walked with him and the most beautiful gift that he gave them afterwards was not necessarily the charge to go out and change the world and to go make um, disciples of all nations the beautiful gift that he gave them was himself the Holy Spirit, which is the comforter, the counselor, the friend, and the intimate companion that we all get to enjoy. So when you want to build a relationship with God, don't come to him with the expectation that you're going to receive all kinds of things because you will. But the Bible tells us if we seek first the kingdom and its righteousness, then all of the things shall be added onto us. That is a byproduct from being in the Father. That is a byproduct from being a servant of the Most High King. That is a byproduct of being with Jesus. It's not something we should go in expecting because even if you brought it to a natural level, who wants to go into a relationship with someone when you're only going into that relationship for what you can get? You want to be in a relationship where you're seeing what you can give. And when Jesus calls us, the beautiful thing is that he's always giving to us. But we also have to have the same heart posture that God wants to be loved. God wants to be cared for. God wants to be our best friend. He wants to be in our face 24-7 because he that's who he is. He's the only self-sufficient entity that still desires to be loved. And how beautiful is it that we get to respond to him in that love? as we build a relationship with him. So I hope this video helped you guys. Um, it took me weeks to finally figure out what I wanted to do with my background on YouTube and what I was gonna do about lighting. And God provides, okay, because this looks amazing. So I'm hoping y'all like this little sit down that we're gonna start doing. I just felt very led to make this my first topic um, as I'm getting back into doing the sit down videos. And so I hope that it blessed y'all and I do feel that after you watch this video and some of you have already experienced this that you will have an invitation from god to come into relationship with him 
Um, and when you receive that invitation, I highly, highly, highly suggest that you respond in humility and say yes to Jesus. If you are a sinner and you would like to experience this relationship with God, I encourage you to say the sinner's prayer in your heart or out loud. It will be located in the description box. If you are already saved and you are a born again believer, I would encourage you to keep checking that you are in the faith, keep self-examining and ensure that you are in right standing with God because there are going to be some very tumultuous times coming ahead um, and only those who are rooted in Christ and who are on the right foundation will stand because a lot of things are getting ready to be shaken and I don't want you to be one of them so blessings to all of you I love all of y'all and remember to like share comment and subscribe I'll see you next week for the next video